just wrapped up, you know, uh, our 2024 draft class. Long day, uh, a lot of picks, a lot of names called, a lot of stuff to work through, uh, but we made it through and then just left the trading room floor, um, you know, downstairs getting the, uh, you know, as we started the uh, undrafted process. So um, th went, that went over, you know, pretty smooth. I feel really good about the draft class. Um, and what these guys are going to be able to, to come in and do. Uh, I think we have some guys that are come in and compete to start, and I think we have some guys that are come in and compete for spots and, you know, make us uh, a team with some depth and, uh, you know, know there's still some holes to fill, and we're going to get to it. Uh, left some open roster spots instead of filling it up with, you know, just all college free agents. You know, we want to be able to have some flexibility to sign some vets uh, and not have to just cut people. Um, but uh, looking forward to it. Um, you know, Anthony's up here with me, been a huge part and huge asset uh, for our personnel department and the structuring and running of the personnel department. So I'm glad he's up here to field all of your questions. So please feel free to direct all questions to him. I'm joking, but nah, um, you guys got it. Cedric said he hadn't, uh, he didn't think he'd talk to you guys throughout. Was, was that the case and how unusual? that you, you draft the key guy without having had much much or any conversation with him? No, it was a part of the process of, of doing that. Um, you know, when you bring guys in, sometimes you have questions, you know, about guys and you want to dig a little bit deeper, and Cedric was about as clean as they come. Um, and so we felt comfortable with what we knew about him um, and our contacts and the people that we know that has spent time with him. Um, so it really wasn't a need to uh, use that. We'd rather use that visit uh, on someone else that we had more questions about. See Brownlee is more of a slot guy, or you see him with the capability to play on the, on the outside too. Yeah, we see him as a guy that's got versatility to play inside and outside. Um, he's a passionate guy. He's tough. You know, he plays bigger than he measures. Um, he's played inside. He's played outside. Um, we feel like he can do both. Brings that versatility. And and, you were down there. No, and I was gonna say, and he, he's a dog on teams. Yeah. If you were down there in Mobile for the Senior Bowl. Six out of these seven guys are uh, Senior Bowl. Uh, you know, uh, participants, is that a coincidence or what went into, you know, so many guys being picked for Mobile? No, I think when you, you know, when you go down to Mobile, that's when you put showcasing what you can do, right? You take these guys who've been at their university for the last four or five years and now you put them in the environment of the Senior Bowl and you give them new coaches. Um, they're around different players, different schemes, and that's what you want to see. And a lot of these guys, you know, rise to the occasion. They show up, they compete. Um, you know, to your question on Cedric Gray, he was a guy that we interviewed down at the Senior Bowl. So we were able to get in front of him, and we felt really good about, you know, what we got from that interview. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a good opportunity for them to showcase what they have and for us to go down there and see them. And, and with James Williams, you know, he said that you guys had spoke to him about linebacker. Mm -hmm. That was really the first time he got to showcase what he could do there. What, what did you see uh, from him in Mobile? Uh, just a kid that's he's, – he's big, big kid. You know, he's 6'3", he's, he's 230 pounds, he's got long arms. Um, he's played in the middle of the field. He's played down in a box. Um, being able to see that on tape and see it live, you know, really helps our evaluation. Um, Frank Bush, you know, did a good job of watching him and kind of projecting what he could be for us and also help us on special teams. Five or seven on defense. I guess it just, that just how the board fell. I mean, going in, do you ever think, okay, we need to be heavy on defense or, or just best players were defense? That, that was time? how the board fell. Um, and, you know, last year we went all offense. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, let the board dictates, you know, what happens and, um, you know, what's available to us. But we kind of figured um, the front end of the draft would probably be heavy offense and then the back half would be heavy defense, and that's kind of how it went for us. Um, you know, we were joking before we came up here. It's a lot of things. You know, TD made the correlation to all the guys, you know, that were at the senior bowls. And looking at the list, uh, what is it, five out of the seven guys we drafted are all names start with J. J. So maybe we have a thing with J names too. Uh, we got Jerome, and that's JC, Jerome, Jarvis, Jaquan, James, and Jalen. So good luck to y'all remembering all those J's. <laughs> Players all at different positions. Is there what are there characteristics from each guy that are similar, you think, of what you're looking for in players that uh, that you would say stand out? Uh, football character. You know, all these guys love football. All these guys are passionate about football. Uh, all these guys fit what we want this program to be and what we want this organization to be about. Um, you can hear the passion in all the guys when you hear these uh, phone calls when we made them, you know, how how this moment was big for them, whether their name was called at 7 or at 252. You know, you feel the passion in all of them. Um, so that's one thing that stands out about all these young men. Randy, 
Yeah, your ears okay from the uh, Jaquan Jackson call? <laughs> Man, it was so much to that call. So, uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a cool moment, you know, especially um, you know with his relationship with Tajay, um, and talking to Tajay literally right after got a FaceTime from him. <laughs> um, he probably FaceTimed me two more times after that. Then sent a text, um, and then Jaquan, you know, called uh, uh, Colt and Levine and asking when can he come, how soon can he get here. Him and Tajay might be driving here now for all I know, but I know he's excited to be here. What does it mean to you to have a guy, well, really both of them, to have a guy wanting to be here that bad? I no, think, I, go ahead, go ahead. No, I think that means a lot, you know, because he's, he's got kind of familiarity with the team, with having Tajay on the team, so he kind of know what to expect, you know, because Tajay's been in the building, new staff, kind of, you know, laid out the parameters of what to expect, so he'll, he'll know that coming in. Uh, sorry. No, and I was going to say, I think, you know, um, I, th I think a lot of kids that we visited with, that we met with, you know, if they had their choice, would want to be here um, just for the environment. And like I said, what this city provides, what this state provides. And um, I think that shows. And I think that's big for, uh, for all of us here. What uh, did you guys see in Jaquan that really set him apart from some of the guys uh, taken around him? And how much does his ability and punt return potentially going to play a factor this fall? Um, I think he's a guy that he's a dual returner. I think he can kick return. I think he can punt return. And he has an element that he can bring to the offense. So he was a, you know, a complete guy for us. Um, and it just made sense, especially with, you know, this new kickoff rule that we're all trying to figure out, you know, and it's, it's essentially the first play of offense, the way it's going to be run. And so you need a guy that has, you know, run the daylight skill set that can, you know, make something out of nothing in short space. How's he do with physicality against the press? I mean, most of these young guys still have, you know, ways to go, you know, because they don't press much in college, you know, especially when you're fast, you, you know, people play off of you because they're scared of the speed. So um, that's a part of his game that he'll continue to work on. And, you know, with Coach Tyke Tobert, who specializes in, you know, developing these young receivers, I have no doubt in my mind that he'll, he'll learn how to do that. Is there one spot you view Harrell at, or are you going to kind of try him at a bunch of different spots to figure out where he fits? I think with our offense, uh, versatility is key. Um, and so all these guys will be cross-trained at multiple positions, um, you know, whether it's, you know, Calvin, D-Hop, everybody will know um, X, Z, and F. And so I think he'll, wherever we see the best fit, you know, probably start him off at, um, at Z or X and, with some, and see how he does on the inside at F. So eventually he'll know all three. With uh, Jalen Harrell, I meant. Oh, sorry. My bad. You <laughs> didn't. Uh, yeah. Jays. Uh, no, uh, Jalen will be um, outside backer. Um, you know, probably uh, maybe start him off at Sam. You know, he's an uh, outside guy with some, you know, athleticism and some twitch and some speed. And obviously, rushing will be a part of his game. So we'll find the best home for him. And Anthony, you, see him, you, you see him more as a guy who can both set the edge and rush, mm -hmm. or you see him more as a situation of rush? No, nah, he can play all three. You know, he's a, he's a, a guy that plays extremely hard, plays extremely physical. Um, you know, we'll continue to develop his hand use um, and proper technique and what we're going to do here and what we're going to use. But I see him as a three-down player. We didn't talk to you about Latham and Sweat, but what, what, what are maybe some of the immediate characteristics that stand out about got, both those guys on each side of the ball? Big. Big guys, physical guys. Um, you know, J.C., we did a lot of work on him. Uh, we did a lot of work on both of those guys. But the first thing that comes to mind for both of those guys is, is size. You know, you win the game in the trenches, um, and both, both of those guys bring that element. You were on that trip to to go see him, you know, trying to project like how a guy like that could fit into this city. Like, how did that process work for you? No, I think the trip was good. We got a chance to meet, you know, him, meet some of his family members, mom, um, really get him in his environment, you know, where he was comfortable and, you know, he did a good job and, you know, he uh, he presented himself well. Um, just a good dude, good dude, good family, good mom. Was there any point where you were close to moving up, moving back throughout the seven rounds, one time closer than the other? Oh, yeah. We were, um, you know, trying to get active in, uh, there in the fourth, uh, fourth round. You know, pretty early had some guys up there, um, you know, just trying to figure out, you know, uh, whether Cedric or some other guys would be there uh, when we uh, got ready to pick. And, you know, you start seeing it's, it's one of those things where you call around, you try to see if there's going to be some interest, um, see if people – um, are trying to move back, and there were some situations where people wanted to move back, and we were looking to move forward. Um, but it was one of those where um, you start to get antsy because you get a feeling of what's going on around you, and you don't want to lose your guy. And 
you know, um, thank God A-Rob and Chad and Callie and everybody else in the room, you know, was like, hey, we can sit tight. And we were able to do that. And uh, Cedric was still there. How transformed do you feel like the corner group is through both the draft and free agency? And how much is like physicality and aggression a part of the the idea there? Yeah, yeah. I feel good with where we are. Um, you know, obviously starting with free agency, you know, getting Cheeto um, and then being able to swing the trade to get LJ um, and having Roger already here. Um, and, you know, then drafting, you know, Jarvis today and, you know, having other guys here um, that, you know, Trey Avery's played, you know, a ton of ball for us and some other guys. So uh, it makes the group competitive. And then when you have a defensive coordinator in Denard and you have Chris Harris as your, you know, corners coach, uh, physicality is going to be a part of what we do. Um, and so I think the way Denard has already addressed the group and how his daily meetings are with the group. I think they know what the expectation is, and I think all those guys are ready to meet it. Cedric, somebody you guys think has the requisite traits to wear the green dot? I was defense. waiting on the green dot. <laughs> <laughs> question. I knew it. Uh, no, we do. We do think he has uh, those traits. He's an extremely smart guy. He's a three-year starter, two-time captain. Um, he has the ability um, – didn't have to do it at North Carolina um, because of the guys he had around him, but he is very capable, um, you know, as is, you know, Jack Gibbons, as is other guys on our team. So we'll let those guys, you know, figure that part out with Denard and Coach Bush. But, um, yeah, we feel like we got more than enough guys capable of wearing the green dot. Ran from them the first part of free agency and now through the draft. What are you, what are you most excited about with the, with the team that you have now versus the end of the season? Um, I'm just most excited about, you know, this coaching staff and the way they've come in and kind of transformed the energy, you know, of the place um, and how they're, you know, how the guys have taken to them. And I'm just ready to get these guys out on the grass. You know, I was uh, joking with Callie earlier. I was like, once we get past this last pick, you know, homie, it's all yours, you know, and it's time for it's time for the, uh, the ball to take place. And so uh, we're really excited about that part, uh, ready to get these rookies in here in a little while, get them acclimated with the vets. I thought, like I mentioned earlier, I thought the vet mini camp went really well. Uh, participation this whole offseason has been great. Um, and now, you know, we got several rookies that are chomping at the bit to be here. And so now they get to have their mini camp and then roll right in, you know, with the vets. So it'll be good to get everybody here. You think it's about here. having three tight ends on the roster. You're still with three tight ends on the roster. Is that an area where you figure you have to go back out in free agency and add a veteran? We don't have three anymore. <laughs> more, more, more announcements to come. <laughs> You're through the second draft here. How did this year go compared to last? Did you feel more comfortable? Was there something that you looked back on from your first draft that you were able to take away? Uh, you know, from first, first year was, you know, I'm, I was a rookie. You know, you didn't know what to expect. It's different when you're, you know, you spent 16 years executing someone else's vision. And then, you know, you get into that first year and it's yours. And um, now you realize everything falls on you. Uh, rather, no matter what people are saying, it's you have to make that decision and, and pull those cards off. And, you know, this year I was more comfortable, you know, in that and especially being able to anticipate runs on positions and uh, using – you know, all the different tools we have available. Uh, I thought Sarah Bailey did a hell of a job, you know, in being able to, you know, talk to us and show us the numbers and when these uh, positional runs were going to happen. And so we could anticipate those things and, you know, understand and know who could be there for us. So it was more of a comfort thing, um, you know, this year. I don't know why this year felt so much longer <laughs> than last year. Um, but I know we looked at it, it was like one point, um, when the fourth round ended, it felt like we were, had already been through the sixth round. You know, and we just knew we had a long day ahead of us, but um, it was just more of a comfort thing. Feel likely you need to return to the veteran market at safety? Yeah, we're going to look, we're going to look, continue to look at the safety spot, and, and that's one that we're going to address. Like we talked about before, it's, it's a lot of good veteran safeties that are out there on the street, and we knew that there would be. So you didn't have to overreach, you know, for a guy, if you will, in the draft, knowing that what was available on the street. 72 with the draft class you said maybe not sign all free agents to get you to 90 you talk at maybe 12 13 and what's your number there for UDFA <laughs> roughly you know the hard the hard part about the the UDFA process is um, nobody signed you know um, you you've had the conversations you feel good with where they are and it's uh it's it's like a college recruiting 
because that's really what it is. It's college recruiting. You may have commitments, but it's they're not yours until they sign. So things could still happen, you know, overnight. You know, you potentially could lose some. You could potentially gain some. So uh, to to your what, – what number did you throw out, Jim? Over 13. R roughly. Okay. In wanting to add some maybe veterans' uh, safety in another spot or two, do you want to maybe get through the offseason program, do it right before camp, and, and see what you've got in hand first before you go out and add a couple more pieces? No, nah, because I think for, for us, if we, we'll, we'll figure out what the right time is. But also when you're, when you're a new regime, you want to get everybody in, everybody on the same footing, you know, um, you know, and especially because a lot of these guys that are available, they hadn't done anything since last season. So we need to see them move around, you know, as opposed to just hoping that they're in shape. And they're vets and they will be. But it's a difference when you get them in your program, get them acclimated to how you're going to do things and how you want things done. So it's, it's probably better to get them in sooner than later.